Carol Itoma, clearly the smartest dressed man in the room. How are you doing? I'm oh, good, thank you. I, I, you know, I gave it a little bit of a try. Yeah, no, looking good, mate. I mean, this is, is this your first press conference or you had a couple before? Never had a press conference before, so this will be my first one and, you know, what, what a show to be on. No, it looks tremendous. So you, are you sort of, you sort of, just get you facing this way. Um, you sort of nervous about it, heading into it, sort of, all these cameras and that? Or are you just cool? Do you feel you're sort of born for this? No, I feel like I'm just taking each step as it comes. Um, new experiences for, for me, so at least you're just taking everything and soaking it up and, you know, taking it with me. Have you had a chance to walk out on the pitch yet? I haven't yet, no. Oh, I've literally yeah. just got here because I, I was watching Rico, my brother, uh, in the European Championship, yeah. so that was his final. So he's won it, he's won gold. He's won gold? He's won gold. Brilliant, Four well, fights, four, four first round stoppages. Mate, your little brother ain't so little, no. and he's an absolute monster, isn't he? Mm. I mean, uh, how, how far can this, this kid go? So he's just won European gold, right? Yeah, yeah. How's he, how far is he going to go? He's, he's going all the way, isn't he? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. What, what, is down, what is in the water down in Chatham when, when they're producing Italmas like this? <laughs> I saw um, Lawrence O'Coley put something on his Instagram mm-hmm. story about you guys. What, what's it like being around him? That Lawrence is such a humble, down-to-earth individual that has shown to everyone that he's at the world level and mm-hmm. he's world, world champion, isn't he? So it's great to be in, around his presence, I guess, and really like take his tips and take advice from him because he, he, he is a watch champion and he's number one. What have you made of the uh, the build-up to Fury White? It's the main event tomorrow night. We had the press conference yesterday. Did you catch much of it? Um, I, obviously, I, was, I wasn't here yesterday. I did get some glimpse of it on yeah. obviously social media and that, and I'm excited. I can't wait. And obviously, to be boxing on that show is mm-hmm. just wow. I'm grateful for Greensbury for producing and giving me the opportunity to go and compete. How do you see the fight actually playing out? So, obviously, in any way boxing, we all know that one punch can change it all. Um, I do believe that Tyson Fury's the one, his skills and his and the way he does things are just far more superior. However, Dillian White has got the heart, has got the hunger, and you know it can change it all in one punch. In terms of Tyson, how do you see him approaching it? Then we've seen so many different versions of Tyson Fury over the years. When he beat Vladimir Klitschko, he was very fleet of foot. He was moving around. He was, he was mm. dancing. He was doing a lot of that. Hands behind the back. Mm. The last couple of um, Deontay Wilder fights, he's bulldozed him, Absolutely. and he wasn't really dancing too much. He was just no. battering him. Um, what sort of Tyson Fury do you think we'll see on Saturday? It's, I don't think I don't think anyone can like call it. Like that. That's what John was, said. John said exactly that. Yeah. I, he said, I don't know. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone could call it because obviously, like Tyson said himself, like Sugar Hill has implemented and brought a new side out of him. Um, well, not a new side, but perhaps a side that he hasn't had before. And it is, it is devastating, like we saw in the three Wilder fights. So we, we, we never know. We never know. There was a comment yesterday that went around one of the journalists, Gareth A. Davis. He said that he would back Dillian White right now to beat Anthony Joshua and that that caused a bit of uproar on Twitter a lot of social media people saying different stuff what do you think of that what do you make of that comment um well, like, well once again like I said with work, I'm going back to what I said with airway boxing mm-hmm. one punch can change it all like we saw when obviously when the first time that white fought Povetkin mm-hmm. and um you know that, that sharp uppercut bam changed it all even Dylan White was he, he's winning and then that one punch changed it all so everyone boxing you know that's all it takes, one punch. Whether, whether it's Joshua that lands first or Dylan one that lands first. Very uh, diplomatic answer, Carol. Um, what have you made of the uh, the silence of, uh, of Dylan White in the build up to this? Is it something that you think he's he's benefited from in terms of not engaging with Tyson, not letting Tyson get in his head, kind of thing? What, mm. what do you make of it all? There's absolutely some sort of chess game on there mm. because I believe like that's one of the things that life is. Life is a game of chess plus monopoly i say but <laughs> chess monopoly uh, if that's what you want to call it um and there is a certain strategies that dylan white and tyson are both playing um however it could just be like he said like the the, the training stuff and you know making sure that his rest is recovering everything mentally getting prepared for the fight is comes first of priority so um i don't really know i don't really know they used to they used to spar several mm. years ago um They've both got different versions as to what happened in those spas. And, yeah. You know, it was probably 10 plus years ago. Yeah. Can they read anything into it? Because 
you get one school of thought which is sparring, sparring, and it was all those years ago. But at the same time, it's still the same person, right? It's still the same guy, and you're going to fight him. And you've got mm. something in your head of, I've done this to him before. Mm -hmm. Can you read much into sparring? Um, that is a very good answer. Oh, uh, quest question. Q&A. Que <laughs> That's a very good question. But the thing is, like you said, it was years ago. Yeah. And one year, two years, three years, X amount of years, you know, builds up on compounds that completely can change a fighter. So someone that boxed a certain weight one year, by year four, they would have excelled and progressed and all the improvements. Um, so I don't, from, I don't think you, you can take that little, the, um, the default, I guess. However, overall, I think it, it, it can be a completely different fight. I guess it's better than nothing at all. They've got some collection of data, sure. right? So there's something you know is going to Some make... substance. Some exactly. Substance. There's going to be certain moves <laughs> here, certain moves there. Um, he said something that I'm hoping isn't true, Tyson, right? He said it at a launch press conference. He said it this week. He's doubled down on it. He said it to me yesterday in yeah. an interview. He says this is his last fight. Yeah. He's going to retire. What do you think? Um... I did watch an interview with him uh, that he done yesterday. Was it my one? Sorry? Was it my one? Yeah. No, I don't think... I don't, nah, I don't should have watched. Okay, yeah, sorry. You, you sorry. can sorry. watch that one as well. It's I'm going to yeah. gonna, gonna yeah. watch that one Good. as well. However, um, in this interview, obviously, he, he's he's going back into the thing that he doesn't want all of this in terms yeah. of like the everything that comes with it. And he, he, he loves the sport, but he hates the things that come with it. And from that point of view, that standpoint, I completely understand him why he would say this is his last one. Uh, because it can probably get overwhelming at that level, you know, he's at the top of the pinnacle of the sport and the, all the attention everything he's getting, it can get overwhelming. Um, so if it is his last fight, I completely understand. Yeah. And um, yeah, but it's just, you know, Saturday tomorrow or Saturday night, it's just, you know, give it his all, I guess. Well, this is it. It, it would be the, a grand stage to end on. Um, he's talked about how, how he wants to delete all of his Instagram, all of his Twitter and all of that and just come away from it all. You're, you're a young pro coming through. Your profile is growing. How, how are you dealing with the pressures of social media? Are you getting any stick or, mm. or how, how's it all working out at your end? Do you know what? I don't, like, you, you know me a little bit now, Dev. Like, I have all these perspectives and, and, and mind things that I, that I um, take to my arsenal and live my life by. So for example, like most people aren't happy with their lives, so how can you expect them to, to be happy with what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Most people don't like themselves, so how can you expect them to like you? Um, so I don't I don't really pay too much attention to what people say on social media because to me it's relevant. I don't, I don't even watch most of it. Um, what I do care about is what my family and my circle, my inner circle think. I think that's, 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 that's the most important. What about Dillian White then heading into this? There's been a... There's been a lot of talk about how he's got here, how long he's waited. Mm. Um, do you think that we're going to see a build-up of years, I guess, of frustration on mm. Saturday night? Is he going to fight with emotion? Is he going to fight with his heart mm. instead of his head because he's finally made it? Mm. What do you think? I feel, I feel like, obviously, like you said, his career has been so much all about perseverance mm. and going through, battling through, battling through, battling through, and that's what's got him here. So I genuinely believe he's going to take this, both his hands, his opportunity, and give it as much of it as he can. Um, with that being said, I do believe he's going to have a calculated approach to it um, and taking a moment when he comes, if it does come. Do you think he can knock Tyson Fury out? I believe any 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 heavyweight yeah. can knock each other out when when they land in the, the right place. The thing with Tyson, though, I mean, we've seen him knock down so so many mm. times now in in his career. It's keeping him down. Yep. Is the problem? Yeah. Do you think White can keep him down? After after that thing I saw with um with that that White that first Wilder fight when he yeah. got knocked down there yeah. and he, was he rose out. from that I'd, I'd, I don't see him staying down. What do you do with a man like that? What would you do, Carol? You've knocked someone out. Mm. He gets up. Mm. What goes through your head? <laughs> Damn. Damn. <They are. laughs> but like, about from from then it's just all about doing what you've done again and doing it again and keep doing it again, keep doing it and sticking to the 10 game plan that works 100 percent. look carol pleasure talking to you you've got your first big press conference mm -hmm. coming up go and enjoy it good luck thank you though i appreciate it